This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Hi, I'm Amy Adams. Welcome to the California Stem Cell Agency's Ask the Expert series. We asked you to submit questions through our blog, Facebook, and Twitter about stem cell research and Alzheimer's disease. Many of you submitted questions, and today, Dr. Lawrence Goldstein of the University of California, San Diego, is gonna answer some of them for us. Let's go in. Can you start by giving us a, just a definition of Alzheimer's disease? Sure, sure. So Alzheimer's disease is a disease as near as we can tell, uniquely of humans. It's a disease of the human brain. It's a disease where, in terms of people's behavior, uh, they lose their ability to remember things, they lose their ability to reason effectively, and they gradually progress to a vegetative state. So that's what you see in terms of the behavior of the person. Um, what you see pathologically, that is what you see in the brain after people have died of the disease are a number of major changes in the structure of the brain. There's death of brain cells, and then there are the so-called plaques and tangles, which are the hallmark pathologies of the disease. They're like little clusters of aggregated proteins throughout the structure of the brain. And there are ideas that the plaques and tangles are part of the causation in some way we still don't fully understand or part of the progression of the disease. At the end of the day, what, what most of us think is most important about the disease, though, is not the death of the brain cells, but the fact that the brain cells malfunction before they die, and they malfunction in in some ways in the most important way, which is that they lose the ability to properly transmit signals among the brain cells. So it's the loss of networks in the brain that really drives the behavioral changes. And somehow, it's the basic biochemistry of the brain cells gone awry that leads to the failure of these connections and networks. Why is it so important that we find a therapy for this disease? Well, it, partly it's widespread. So the estimates are 10% of people over the age of 65 have Alzheimer's disease. 50% of people over the age of 85 have Alzheimer's disease. And every time you have a person who has disease, you actually have a family that has disease that's taking care of the older person who has it. The emotional devastation that it wreaks is tremendous. I mean, I can say that from firsthand experience from my own family and the economic devastation that it's wreaking on families and ultimately on the country is tremendous. There's a direct economic cost of about $200 billion a year in the United States, and there's probably an indirect economic cost of two or $300 billion would be a reasonable estimate. So you know, somewhere in the range of 400 to $500 billion a year of cost to the nation, all of us, and we only spend $500 million a year on research into finding what's going wrong and finding a way to treat it. We're outnumbered 1,000 to 1. We got several questions from people who wanted to know um, about research involving injecting stem cells into the brain. One has to do with whether the cells would reverse the disease altogether or just slow down the progression. Yep. Another had to do with whether or not new stem cells could restore memories that were lost. Yep. I mean, once the memories are lost, can you bring them back? Well, so at the end of the day, nobody knows the answers to any of these things. That's the thing about research. You're trying to discover and learn something that you don't already know. Um, I think there are a couple of different schools of thought on this in the field. There are those who think that using stem cells themselves transplanted into the brains of people who have Alzheimer's disease could reverse some of the pathological abnormalities, possibly could help restore memories if they're not totally lost. And part of that problem is we don't entirely understand how memories are stored, so we don't know if you can extract it back from a broken hard disk in a sense. Um, and I think at the end of the day, one needs to try these things to find out. One needs research to, to work on that. I personally don't think that using stem cells themselves as therapies for Alzheimer's disease is the most rapid, effective path forward. And so my group is more focused on using the stem cells 
to better understand the disease with the idea that if you understand what's going wrong, that helps you invent a drug-based or other kind of therapy. But even though I don't think that the stem cells themselves are the best way forward, I mean, scientists, after all, we all have different opinions, we have different ideas, we vote with our feet about what we think is the best way to go, I think it's important that there are people in the field pursuing that avenue because they might be right and I might be wrong and that's, that's great. You know, if somebody can figure out some way of reversing the course of this disease using stem cells, you know, great, I'm all for it but we have to do the work to find out. There's no substitute for doing the research work. Larry, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming to visit me. Good luck with your work. Thanks.